We know that the Lord has called believers, even in the New Testament, to fast. Jesus didn't say if you fast, He said when you fast. We know that the early church fasted. The history of the early church tells us they fasted twice a week. We see Apostle Paul served God with fastings and the Lord calls believers today to fast. One of my favorite sayings is if you want to last, you got to fast. Fasting is abstaining from food for spiritual reasons. Fasting is not starvation. Fasting is not a diet and fasting is not a hunger strike. Fasting is us moving, it's not moving God, it's us being moved closer, be sensitive and led by the Holy Spirit. Now here are the five types of fastings you can do as a Christian. The first one is the absolute fast or some people call it the dry fasting. It's when you don't drink water and you don't eat food. One of those people who did that was Moses. He did 40 days of a dry fast. Don't try this at home. Like this was supernatural. Let's in fact read the verse. In Exodus chapter 34 verse 28 it says, And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. I want you to remember this, he was there with the Lord. So this wasn't like you and I are with the Lord, you know, when we spend time in our devotions, the Holy Spirit lives in us. Moses was actually like physically with God, like this was incredible, okay? And in his manifest presence, God was actually there physically with him and it says he neither ate bread nor drunk water. And he wrote, so God wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And so this was like supernatural kind of a fast, okay? So we are discouraged from doing that because most of the doctors will agree that after three days if you don't drink water and you don't eat food, you are going to meet the Lord, okay? And that's not the meeting that you want yet because the reason why you're fasting is so you can draw near to God to receive His power, His presence and His purity in your life to fulfill His purpose in your life. And so the goal is not to meet the Lord physically during fasting. The goal is to get closer spiritually so you can still fulfill your purpose physically. So that is the first kind of fasting is the dry fast or the absolute fast no water and no drink. The other people who did that is actually the city of Nineveh. They fasted for three days like that. In Jonah chapter 3 verse 7 it says that he caused the king, caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the degree, decree of the king and his nobles saying, let neither man nor beast, ouch, herd nor flock taste anything. Do not let them eat nor drink water. I mean, that's brutal. Cats couldn't eat dogs. Your little birdie is not going to get any water. Chickens, I ain't going to eat anything like nobody. Pigs, cows, everybody's going on the fast. And the need was great because God was about to destroy them. And in their way of repentance before God, somehow they thought that this was the way to show humility and brokenness. I think the people of Nineveh knew more about God than some of us in America or in other countries because so many people still fight whether Christians Christians should fast or not. This city was pagan and yet they knew this is the way you humble yourself before God and you fast. Now you don't need to fast to get saved, don't, don't get me wrong, but fasting does show your brokenness. It's not to move God, it's to move you to a place of humility and they did that for three days, no water and no food and they made it. The whole city, the Bible doesn't say that neither of them died and so dry fast, you know, is okay to do it. Paul went on a three-day fast. It was also a dry fast. In Acts chapter 9 verse 9 it says, and he was three days without sight and neither ate nor drunk. Now Paul had this encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus and he spends three days being blind. He refuses to eat and drink and the Lord, you know, revealed Himself to him. Now as a caution, I personally discourage people from undertaking more than three days of dry fasting or more than one day of dry fasting because you are really, you need water, okay? And so unless you get a clear directive of the Lord and you're in good health, this kind of a fasting is very harmful, could be very harmful to your health. More than three days will kill you. And if you make it four days and a fifth day, you're going to die. And so the Lord doesn't want us to fast again so that we can meet Him physically. He wants us to fast so that we can meet Him spiritually. And so personally, I don't do dry fasting for one reason is because you can last longer on water and what Jesus is the living water. So that's why I don't do dry fasting. But I know some people who do it and it works well for them. The second type of fasting is the normal fast. The normal fast is when you don't eat food but you only drink water. Example of that is Jesus. Luke chapter 4 verse 2. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil, in those days he ate nothing. And afterward, when they were ended, he was hungry. Now the fact that it does not say that Jesus did not drink anything indicates that he probably drunk water because in other instances where it was very clear that Paul, Nineveh and Moses did not drink water, Bible indicated so. 
And so this was normal fast where you abstain from food completely, all kinds of food, non-stop, pretty, pretty much if you're doing a three-day fast that you for 72 hours you don't eat food, you only drink water. Or sometimes we call it the liquid fast where some people sometimes add a little bit of like lemon or something or some kind of uh, electrolytes into the water to give them just a slightly boost of energy. But the point here is liquid fast. Now I don't consider this liquid fast for people who shove smoothies or who literally take every single thing and make a juice out of it because some of these juices and smoothies can be so filling you actually don't even need to eat you know I heard of a person who put a burger in the blender you know and yeah that, that that's, doesn't count that just because you can drink it through a straw it does not mean you're really fasting so you have to be honest unless you really can't go on and you need a little smoothie to kind of help you not quit and not give up that's different but if you start looking for these like loopholes and to do this kind of a fast then you just have to be honest and ask yourself, what are you trying to get out of it? Are you trying to do minimum and get the maximum out of it? Or are you trying to get the minimum in and then get the minimum out. And so it's not about legalism, but it's about commitment and it's about disciplining your flesh and honestly denying your, your desires and your passions to pursue God. So the first kind of fasting is the dry fast. The second one is the normal fast. The third one is the partial fast. The partial fast could be abstaining from certain foods or abstaining from food for a particular time. Some people do intermittent fasting where they don't eat breakfast, they only eat lunch and then dinner. Some people like Daniel, for example, he abstained from uh, sweets and meats and the Bible says that no wine entered into his mouth and he did not anoint his face with oil in Daniel chapter 10 verse 3. And so a, a partial fast could, could be abstaining from meals on the set days or abstaining from certain kinds of foods commonly referred to as the Daniel's fast. Um, no sweets, no meats, no dairy, soups only, fruit and vegetables only and water. And so some people practice this kind of a fasting especially for those who cannot go longer without food or for for those who have certain medical conditions which prohibit them from abstaining from foods completely or those that are taking medicine or some who are pregnant or nursing mothers or um, in other categories. So that's also a good fast to consider. But if you're in good health, just go all the way brother, go all the way sister, you can do it. God is with you and I encourage you. Number four is non-food fast. So this is mainly from people or for people who have medical conditions. Non-fast food is the safest way to practice this spiritual discipline. Like we see Daniel did not anoint himself in Daniel chapter 10 verse 3. That's one of the ways that you can abstain is I probably would discourage you like not taking a shower and not like you know washing your face, brushing your teeth because you know you might <laughs> you might scare people when you go into the world or not changing your clothes and so but for Daniel this was a way of abstaining from something, not only abstaining from sweets, meats and, and uh, dairy and, and wine, but he also did not anoint his face. And for some people it could be abstaining from sexual relationship with your spouse, not with your girlfriend. That's not fasting, okay? You should be not sleeping with your girlfriend in the first place according to the scripture. The Bible says the marriage bed should be undefiled and, and fornicators and adulterers God will judge. But within the marriage covenant you can abstain from sexual relationship. Now there's no indication in the New Testament that you have to do that in order to seek the Lord's face but the fact that Paul mentions that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5 gives us a directive that that's something that is optional. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer and then come together again that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. That is the only scripture that I could see in the New Testament where fasting and prayer is connected to not having sex with your spouse. Maybe it's taken from the Old Testament when Moses told the man in Exodus chapter 19 verse 15 he says do not come near your wives and be ready for the third day. And some people even go as far as during communion or during their fasting times they encourage men and women not to sleep together based on these premises but we don't see that in the scripture as a clear directive to abstain from sexual relationship during the time of fasting unless some people choose to with consent remember and then we have to come back together to not allow Satan to tempt us because of lack of self-control. Another thing that we can abstain from that's non-food is things like certain items, places, people, practices. For example it could be social media, it could be television, it could be certain gatherings, certain social things maybe that bear no fruit 
fruit, but they can help us by avoiding those things. They can help us to regain our sensitivity and closeness to God and give us more free time to spend time reading the Word, praying and studying the Scriptures. We see this in Joshua chapter 3 verse 5 that Joshua says, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders in your midst. In Genesis 35 verse 4 it says that they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands and earrings which were in their ears and Jacob hid them under the turbanth tree which was by Shechem. And so not only we see people would separate themselves but in the case of Jacob they actually took their earrings off but these earrings and the, this jewelry was dedicated to foreign gods. It probably had foreign gods engraved in it and so Jacob would bury that. That was their way of separating themselves to God. Now the fifth fast is the culprit fast. So the culprit fast is the fast that is called by God through a person that is in leadership position. Now we know there's a private fast which is done in secret. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 16 Jesus gives us clear directive that when you're personally fasting don't blow a trumpet in front of you. Don't try to do it to appear spiritual meaning don't go on social media. Hey everybody I'm fasting. I'm taking a, a day off from social media. Like it's not like somebody's gonna notice if you and I don't post for one day. Okay we're not that important. But this kind of a private private fast shouldn't be to draw attention to ourselves. But there's a public fast. It's slightly different. In the public fast, it's proclaimed by leaders. And it's kind of a public knowledge that everybody's fasting. We see that Samuel calls called the nation to fast in 1 Samuel 7, 6. We see that Esther called the nation to fast in Esther 4, 16. We see that Ezra called people to fast in Ezra 8, 21, 22 and 23. And we see King of Nineveh declared a fast in Jonah chapter 3, verse 5. These people declared a public fast and the nation the people that it concerned, they fasted. Israel fasted once a year on the Day of Atonement. And so they afflicted their souls, the Bible says. And so a lot of churches do it in the beginning of the year. Sometimes a local pastor will, you know, declare that the Lord is leading him and the local church for a week of fasting. And when that happens, you know, that is a green light for you to fast. For those of you who are like, oh, but God didn't speak to me. Well, He doesn't have to. People who were under the leadership that time when Esther was the queen, God didn't have to speak to them. He moved Esther. He moved Ezra. He moved Samuel. He moved King of Nineveh. He moved other people to fast. And so I would encourage you that as we are approaching the new year or depending on when you're watching this video, that as your local church declares a fast, take it personally. This is God leading you into a fast. A lot of breakthroughs can happen. I've seen people get healed. I've seen people get breakthrough in the area. They couldn't get a breakthrough through fasting. And I have another video about health benefits of fasting. I personally experienced tremendous breakthrough in my life through simple one day, three day, 21 days and 40 day fasts. And so I encourage you to jump into this, embrace this lifestyle as a Christian and see God break through in your life in amazing supernatural ways. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Which fast do you practice? Which fast have you never tried before? Drop that in, in the comments below. I would love to hear from you.